Welcome back to an episode of the Live Better Podcast. I'm your host and Centric Senior Vice President of Marketing, Kelly Green. I'm so excited that you're here. In fact, every month we post a new episode where I'm joined by a guest to chat about finances and all things living better. Subscribe today so that you never miss an episode. Today we are joined by Zane Dubois, our Cards Manager at Centric. We are here to discuss all things fraud and keeping your finances safe. So Zane, welcome to the Live Better Podcast. Yes. It's a joy to have you here. I'm so glad this is an honor to be here. Oh, thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm um, Zane Dubois, I'm Card Services Manager here at Centric. I've been with Centric uh, a little over a year now. Um, kind of fully involved now with Centric, kind of got the flow of things. It's actually my first uh, rodeo into uh, into um, I've always been in banking, but with um, credit unions. Oh yeah. So this is my first foray into into credit unions. So I kind of figuring out how that works, but credit cards and debit cards they all kind of work across all spectrum. So. That's been kind of my world for about 10 years. I've been in cards specifically and dealing with different things, magnets wise and fraud and kind of dealing with all that. Mainly fraud is where I kind of yeah. got into the foray of cards, which is the, the biggest arena when it comes to cards. No kidding. It's so wild and it's growing and growing. And speaking of things that are growing, your family has recently grown by one. So tell us a little bit when you're not here at managing the cards and fraud. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your personal life. So we, uh, we yes, we got a, a third one, uh, our littlest bundle of joy, Jordan. Love that it. we have uh, our oldest girl is uh, Juliana Jules, and then we have a middle boy, which is Jet. We call him Jet. Uh, so cute, Jarrett. So, and he's just our rough and tumble little boy. So. We love him, and then Jordan hopefully will come along and be our peaceful one. Um, that's what we're hoping. So caboose, maybe caboose, maybe. <laughs> that, that's what, if my wife has anything to say about it. Yes. Oh, I love that. Well, that's so wonderful, and Zane, like you mentioned, being here um, for a few years, but being in, involved in banking for over ten plus years, you really are an expert at managing all things cards, and it's a real delight to have you. You've really helped us so much in streamlining things for a better experience with cards for our members. So thank you for your expertise in that. So just kind of share with us a little bit too, as far as when you've seen maybe debit and credit card fraud, you know, how prevalent really is it today? It's still a a problem today. Um, They really haven't let up with fraudsters. You have different scams that come along, different things come and go, different methods are utilized. Um, But by and large, I mean, you have different technologies that happen to come along and fraudsters or or scammers will kind of seize on that particular opportunity. Um, So kind of like with most things, you can't ever get a step ahead without trying to, you're trying to service the member as best as you can with new technologies. And unfortunately, the bad actors will come along and try to exploit that new technology so if you could really tell our listeners to uh, some things to help maybe safeguard or things to be aware of when they're using their cards. Absolutely. Uh, the biggest thing is keeping hold of your physical plastic, your actual physical card, keeping it as protected as possible. Um, and that means not giving it to anybody, not sharing your number with anybody, not being over sharing with your number. Um and giving it to somebody because every time you give your card to somebody mm-hmm. that is kind of out there in the world and you that's one less control uh, aspect that you have of that particular number uh, or swipe or plastic stuff like that. So that's kind of the number one thing is like safeguarding your actual number, your actual piece of plastic. So what are your thoughts on mobile wallets? Do you feel like that's a more, maybe a safer, more secure way of payment? I do. It, it actually kind of piggybacks off of the EMV technology that came out a few years ago. Um, so that kind of takes that a much more secure because all of your digital wallets are on your secure device. So it's not actually in the cloud, um, especially with, like with Apple and Samsung um, and Google as well. The actual number and the, dev- uh, 
encryption is on the device, not in the cloud. So it's not shared or hackable. It's actually on the, on the actual phone. Gotcha. So when you say the EMV, just for our listeners, you're really referring to the chip. Correct. So there is a specific encryption essentially with every transaction that when you upload your your card to your mobile wallet, you kind of have that additional safeguard too. You have the card somewhat because you have the device. Right. But it's I love that. And that so a lot of people just don't necessarily realize that why that chip was really you know, it was an addition to our card. Yeah, that was the biggest leap forward. Uh, and actually, the U.S. and studying it was kind of late to the ball game yeah. on that. Um, just because I think the convenience factor uh, and the infrastructure that was already built in the U.S. was ginormous when it comes to cards. So all of those terminals had to slowly mm-hmm. be, you know, upgraded to you know, allow for that and take advantage of that network. Um, whereas in Europe is a little bit easier to kind of like throw out there because it's not as a big of rollout, but U S had to have, you know, landscape wise had to have that huge rollout. Um, so the policies that kind of allowed for the slower involvement of that, but the, yeah, the EMV was the biggest leap in protecting the actual cars. Sure. That's so wild, you know, really thinking about that, you know, and and when you when you talk about the digital wallet, so maybe speak to our listeners too as far as yes, they have the physical card, which in our case, our members are awaiting the new portrait look, but also the tap card feature. Right. So that's an additional uh, safeguard, so to speak, right. where it's just like using your mobile wallet, except your cards in hand. Correct. Yes. With, with the digital wallet, you're just tapping. Uh, it's on your device. Um the good thing about that is um, it's wherever most people have their phones. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be with you no matter what. And it's real easy. And all the terminals that would have contactless with our new contactless cards would also use the tap to pay feature with your phone. Does the same exact functionality, oh, so just awesome. as quick. Um, and you get your, a lot of times you can get an e receipt right there. Um, so if you don't want an actual paper receipt, It'll actually, on your phone, you'll actually can see your history yeah. and the actual wallet as well. And the cool thing about it, too, I think that especially when uploading your card to your mobile wallet, and I love the convenience of it, just like you're mentioning with the tap card, you know, or your remote card feature there. Um, one of the things to really consider and think about, too, is that some safeguards with your phone. So, you know, you really want to have, whether it's facial recognition, thumbprint, or a code that you're entering into your phone. Because it's not only just safeguarding your device, but it's safeguarding any other real, you know, financial relationships you may have and, and added to your phone. Um, that's a good point. And that's one thing that's kind of been hard to police and understand and, and educate um, is because you got to think of it now, that is an access point. Mm-hmm. And that's something that even the regulations has kind of like been slowly um, not aware of. And like you have to now safeguard your, safeguard your phone like you would your wallet. It, it is a wallet. Okay. It's just like having your purse or your wallet and your card. So, yeah, that is a very important to have a now with Face ID, Touch ID. There's still some phones out there with Touch ID and stuff like that. So make sure that you're having some sort of passcode. And that's also not shared. That's something that's should be just like your pen and yeah. your card. That should not be shared with anybody but somebody that you absolutely trust. So think about it. if you're going to hand your phone to somebody or your wallet, that's going to be the same thing. So if you're handing somebody your phone and you're giving them access, think of it. You're just handing them your check mm-hmm. locally, your wallet. You got to think of it at that way. That is so true. I'm glad that you mentioned it that way too, because we are involved with it, with banking and cards and we see fraud day in and day out. So someone who is just, you know, um, maybe a member of our credit union that doesn't really realize they know this is a form of payment. Right. So they're kind of at the mercy of us sharing with them what are the things that they should do. So if a member really suspects that there might be some fraud on their account with their card, talk us through what should be the very first thing that if I've identified that this might be fraud, what should I do next? First thing you should do, uh, if you have are like our car controls in our app and our mobile app. First thing you should do if you have that access is turn off the card. 
that should be your first option is like looking at it, making sure that you know that that is something you did not do um, and turning off the card. If you don't have that capability, uh, you can call us. We do have after hours. Uh, if it's during business hours, our my centric team is wonderful in helping you getting that turned off and getting your new card replacement. Um, if you're happen to be in a uh, centric location, I come into it and we're happy to to kind of turn that off and look help help you manage that. Because um, even if it if you need to turn it off real quick and then come and ask later. That's fine, and we can help you if we need to possibly turn that back on. If it's something that's benign, that's not right, fraudulent, something like that. But it's if you see something that's not right, first instinct should be turn the card off. Right, and that is just to your point to make sure our listeners understand too is that the first thing that you can do when you have the MyCentric mobile app, we allow card controls. And it's just a toggle of a button. Toggle of a button. That's it. And you just turn off access to your card. And to your point, after you've either spoken to someone via text, call, or even in person, then if you've truly identified that this is fraud, then of course we can replace your card. Correct. We can we can go those avenues to kind of mitigate if something happened to have gone through. Mm-hmm. We can mitigate that. Uh, if we need to get another card, if it truly was fraud, that's uh, pretty painless and we can get you a new card um, ordered either in the center or um, in the mail or stuff like that. Sure. So it's even cards could be provided like we've talked about many times is saying we have instant issue cards. So that's a beautiful thing. Even if you're coming on as a new member or in this circumstance, if you have had fraud occur, you can literally get a new card same day. Now, if someone's traveling, do you also ship those to those members as well? We do. We can we can ship them, and actually, um, it's very quick. Um, usually, about seven to ten business days, we can get you a new card in the mail. Sure. Um, we have a supplier that's very good that can get uh, cards out very very quickly. See, that's great. I love that. It's always you know I always think about it. Gosh. To have the, having two forms of payment is something that's always a good thing to consider. Absolutely. And at Centric, we offer the debit card and a credit card so that if something has happened with one of your payments, you've got a backup because you just never know. And talk to us too. So maybe there are times that perhaps we as the, the member don't recognize that there's fraud happening on our account. Can you maybe talk about some of the safeguards, maybe the responsibility that Centric plays? To help maybe safeguard and prevent our members? Absolutely. Yeah, we do have a system in place that monitors all of our cards uh, through our card processor. Um, It is an actual like Falcon fraud alert system uh, that monitors uh, 24 hours a day. Every transaction that happens, it will actually rate it a particular score. So it's looking out across the network, um, across all of our cards, actually across multiple banks. Mm -hmm. Uh, credit unions and looking at different trends, it will score particular transactions b- based on the merchant, based on the amount, uh, location. All of that kind of goes into play. Um, so we do have that in place. It's a, a pretty good safety net. Sometimes it will get things wrong, but a lot of times, I mean, by and large, it is um, a pretty accurate uh, gauge. Um, so if you get uh, a fraud text, you know, make sure that you're looking at that. Yeah. Um, because see. if you don't answer it right away, what's going to happen? <laughs> they're they're going to take it. They're going to think, oh, they're not paying attention and I can potentially make some other purchases. That's right. A lot of times um, the, what they'll do is they'll, if they happen to get a card number, they'll try to load it on a particular platform. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you'll see an initial charge, sometimes for like a zero or one dollar smaller charge. That is just a loading charge that happens with just about every time that you load it on a particular mm-hmm. platform, subscription service or stuff like that. So if you see something pop up, even if it's something um, you may have a subscription to something with like Amazon. Sure. Um, and one example, actually, my mother-in-law just this past weekend, um, she does do Amazon, but she wasn't making anything over the weekend. She got an alert. Luckily, she had uh, alerts turned on her phone, which we do have a centric. You can turn uh, in the control. You can turn off, uh, turn on um, notifications for every transaction. 
So she got a, a notification from Amazon and she said, I, I don't recognize that. She called me. Uh, I said, well, <laughs> of course, of course he's going to call me the, the, I guess the banker in the family. That's right. But she said, Hey, um, I got something from Amazon. Uh, what do I need to do? And I said, did you purchase anything? No, no, no. I said, well, turn your card off. Yeah. So, so that's usually a lot of things is, uh, you'll see some initial things and it may be for a merchant that you may have done, but if it's something you did not mm-hmm. do, you know, you didn't do in that particular time, question it, look at your, um, online banking, um, ask somebody that may have had access to your card or something like that and take action as quick. It's as quick. quick. It's just as quick as you can. And when you're talking about too, if there's something that maybe we as the member don't understand, I want to go back and really hit on that text message that you might receive. That's why it's so critical that you have your updated address, yes. email address, and phone number so that if there is fraud that is sus- suspected on your account, right. our company will send a text message to you to right. say, hey, verify this purchase. Is this really you? Right. And you've got a very short time frame to say yes or no. And if you do not respond or you say, no, this is not me, you know, then you can immediately understand that that card is no longer active. I've had that happen to me before, uh, whenever, which I'm grateful for that. I was actually traveling out of state and it was just a random kind of situation. And I was swiping my debit card at a convenience store. And what I was able to recognize too, when I got back into my car, I didn't have my phone with me. It asked, is this you? And I'm like, oh, it is me. But time had gone by. Yeah. And my card was inactive at that point. But the good news is, is if once that we have the ability, if we can say, hey, let's have a conversation about this. We call the credit union. We'll right. try to find a way to work through that, even if it is involving getting a new card. So Absolutely. there's no no cost to the member either. If there's no. ever any fraud no. to Absolutely. replace that card, it's completely free. Absolutely. yeah, I love it. And I thank you so much for sharing, too, that real life example with your mother-in-law. If you had not have been there to answer her call. I can just imagine that would not have been a good experience for you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. She calls me for uh, most thinking bank. I love that. Well, that's because you're just you are you are a trusted source, and you know how um, you deal with this day in and day out. And so we just really thank you. And so Zane, if there is anything else that you could leave our listeners with, what are some things that you might share with them? Um, I guess be vigilant. Uh, you know, new technologies are out there with, with the contactless now that we'll be rolling out uh, with our tap to pay with our phones, with our mobile wallets. But still have your wits or your safeguard, your phone. Yes. Never. There's, um, you know, prevalent scam uh, artists that's kind of oh. making their circuits around. Uh, a lot of times they will call and impersonate. That's the biggest thing right now is kind of the impersonation thing. Mm-hmm. Um so again, we do have those measures in place that we reach out to you via text or, or phone, but we're never going to ask you for information. We have the information. Um, our my team will kind of verify different things, but we're not going to be asking you for mm-hmm. very sensitive information, especially like full card numbers and PIN numbers and addresses and stuff like that. Those are not things that we ask. That's not something that we ask, especially on a fraud. If we're trying to confirm fraud, uh, and especially on the text messages, we've seen uh, a few different ones that will, they're trying to scam and spoof our, our front alerts, but, and they're asking for information. So if you ever have a text from us, uh, the valid ones are going to s- actually disclose everything that needs to be disclosed. It's going to show the last four of the card. It's going to show the amount and the merchant. And it's going to ask you on this date with this last four of card number, did you make this transaction? Right. All this, it's going to ask you a yes or no question. And there's nothing else beyond that. And nothing else beyond that. You're going to, if you say, yes, this was me, it's going to say, okay, thank you. You're, you know. Let's carry on. Carry on. <laughs> uh, brilliantly wordedly, it'll say, yeah. oh, your friend, your card's good to use and everything like that. It's been unblocked. Yeah. Um, and if you say no. It'll say a temporary block has been placed on your card. Please reach out to Centric to get a replacement mm-hmm. card. And that's that's as extent. So we don't ask you. It's not going to give you a link to click on to call. It's not going to ask you to call a number. It's 
say reach out to your centric representative and that's what and that's the best thing to do especially if you have some doubts we would rather you just even if it's us, hang up, call back. That's right. Then get involved in uh, somebody impersonating a centric uh, employee. Um, so if you ever feel hesitant on my, am I truly calling centric? Uh, hang up, especially if somebody's calling you, hang up, call the number that you know at centric or come by one of our centers. And that way you know you're getting a my centric That's or a right. centric representative. I'm so glad that you mentioned that, too, to our listeners today, Zane, because it is so important. The impersonation is real. Nine times out of ten, they're calling, and it may sound like they're in a a very large call center. Um, They're asking very sensitive information, like full card number, as you've mentioned, and maybe even their Social Security number. And those are two things that Centric will never ask for. Correct. So... It's so very important for our listeners to understand that if ever you are in doubt, just end the call and call our main line. And just for those of you that are listening to, we will add that information into our show notes so that you have that. But this is it's something to to really consider whenever you're in doubt and give them a call yourself. Hang up and call directly. That's the, the safest way. Well, Zane, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Absolutely. Thanks. Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, until next time. So thank you for listening to our podcast and tune back in next month for another episode of the Live Better podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and to ensure you never miss out on helpful tips. Like us on Facebook at Centric Federal Credit Union and find us at MyCentric on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and YouTube. You can find information about today's topic, our monthly blog, and more at mycentric.org. Always remember, Centric is federally insured by the NCUA.